With this recording, we are going to finish vocal music of the Baroque time, and we're going to discuss three different forms today. One is a passion, the other is the word chorale, and the other one is the cantata. Bach composed the Christmas Oratorio and also three settings of passion, the passion. A rather special type of oratorio. So you can say this is an oratorio telling the story of Christ's crucifixion. So we know, know that an oratorio is a work with the words mostly from the Bible. But this is now, the passion is from a specific part of the Bible. And that is the story of Christ's crucifixion. Besides recitatives, arias and choruses that we find in the Passion, Bach also includes settings of a chorale. So that is German hymn tunes. We have chorales in the Passion and he places them at key points to intensify the most solemn and deeply moving moments of the story. So to summarize this again, um, a passion is a musical setting of the suffering and crucifixion of Christ, based either on biblical text or poetic elaborations. Now, this is not something that started in the Baroque era. We see there, dating from the 4th century onward, they range from unaccompanied plain song to compositions for soloists, chorus and orchestra. The music of a passion play it's a form of cantata or oratorio treating of the sufferings and death of Christ and is performed with chorales, arias, recitatives and chorus. Bach composed five passions and only two of them survived. The ones that survived is St. Matthew and St. John passions. And one is actually composed for double chorus. And the double chorus one is easily identified as the St. Matthew Passion. So you have to know that a passion is a kind of oratorio and it deals with the story of the suffering of Christ. So I also have a specific time of the year when I'm going to go and listen in a church or in a concert hall to the performance of a passion. The second word for today is the chorale. It's a melody to which a hymn is sung by the congregation in a German Protestant church service. It's a typical four-part setting of a chorale in which the sopranos and the congregation sing the melody along with three lower voices. And that is known as a chorale harmonization. Chorales tend to be simple and singable tunes because everybody needs to sing along. The words are often sung to a rhyming scheme and are in strophic form. The same melody is used for the different verses. Within a verse, many chorales follow the AAB pattern of melody that is known as the German bar form. When we're going to listen to the YouTube videos, we will also follow a chorale that they sing along with. But this is just to give you an idea. We have the sopranos and the congregations singing the top line. And that is repeated. So it's A, A. And then we have the B section. And it's strophic. So I will have other words for the next verse. Singing A and repeat the A and then go to the B. And then you will see the soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And I have a continue. So that we know the basso continue that is for the harpsichord or in this case the organ with a cello or a lute playing along. So that is a classical example of what the chorale will look like. And I'm sure that if I play chorales that you will say, I know this melody because they, um, they are songs that I hear in church. Now for assignment 32, you have to listen to the Passion according to St. Matthew and listen to the section describing the last moments of the crucifixion. This includes the recitative A Kalpatha and the aria See the Saviour's outstretched hands and the chorale If I Should Ever Forsake Thee. As you listen to this, you have to discover and note down 
two different types of recitative. So, of course, you're going to listen to other pieces as well in the St. Matthew Passion. The continued instruments which accompany these recitatives, other instruments which Bach includes in his orchestra, two special ways in which Bach uses his chorus in this music. And now this is the recitative that you're going to listen to and try and identify whether this is a seco or accompagnato recitative. Aria. So look at those instruments. We'll talk about the instruments just now. So it's got a reed like an oboe. And then the choir answers. So that is one way that Bach uses the choir. So they in dialogue the whole time. I hear it's quite a small group accompanying the soloist. Now the form that you have to complete on Google Classroom, you will see that I have added recitatives for you to go and listen to. And describe what you hear. So describe whether you hear an accompanied uh, recitative or a sequel, uh, um, unaccompanied recitative. Okay? You will see the instruments on all the attached links of the YouTube videos. Other instruments which Bach includes in his orchestra, so instruments that you um, do not maybe know that they're so old, so look out for those as well. And then two special ways Bach uses his chorus in this work. If you listen to the background, you will again hear how the chorus answers. Um, they answer the whole time they answer the soloists, okay? And then the difference in texture and in musical and dramatic effect of the chorale contrasted against the preceding music. 
So there I have added two chorales for you to listen to, and then you can do the questions on that. And here I have a little bit of background now. Since 1975, it is assumed that Bach's St. Matthew's Passion was first performed on Good Friday, the 11th of April, 1727, although its first performance may have been as late as Good Friday, 1729, according to other sources. The first performance took place in the St. Thomas Church, the Thomaskirche, in Leipzig, where Bach was the Thomas Cantor and responsible for the music in the church since 1723. This passion was written for two choruses and orchestra. So we have a chorus one there, and we have a choir two there. So you will see that we have a piano voice, a soprano soloist, alto soloist, a tenor soloist, a chorus in SATB, Two traversos, that's a very old instrument. Two oboes, two oboe d'amour, two oboes da caccia, so lots of oboes. And then that funny looking instrument. A lute for my continue. I had strings and the continue was at least one of the organs of the St. Thomas um, Church. And choir two, we, con um, we have SATB voices, and we had the strings, we had a cello, traversos, again oboes, and maybe another organ. In Bach's time, only men sang in the church. High-pitched vocal parts were usually performed, performed by treble choruses. Okay? And if you look at the two here, the background on the Achbol Katha, and the aria, once again, we have a plaint from the countertenor. And you will hear that the oboes and the pizzicato bass give this move movement a somber feel. The aria which follows beseeches the faithful believers to come and be with Christ. The quick interjections of the chorus contrasting with the lyrical line given to the countertenor. And you will see here the instruments that they asked. Two oboes, the Gatschia, a Renaissance oboe shaped like a crescent and with a particularly hollow sound. That's what you hear there. In using this instrument, Bach, a composer who was very aware of timbre, was illustrating the image of the skull. Okay, and I know the whole story of the crucifixion. So that's quite important. Another word is cantate. Bach also composed more than 200 church cantates. Cantate meaning to, to be sung. They are, for, they are for soloist and chorus accompanied by orchestra and continue and are like miniature oratorios. A Bach cantate often opens with a weighty chorus, continues with recitatives, arias and dios for solos and then close with the choral. A fine example is number 140 based upon the choral Wachet Auf. So cantate is a musical setting of a text, mostly religious, but it can also be secular, and it consists of arias, dios, and choruses, interspersed with recitatives and orchestras. It can also be considered as being a miniature oratorio. It comes from the Italian word cantare, which means to be sung, in its early form, cantates refer to a music piece that is meant to be sung. Okay. And it's approximately 30 minutes long. I am sure you will recognize this melody. And this is an example of the choral. So make sure that you understand the passion, the choral, and the cantate for this week.